This video is sponsored by PCBWay. What's up guys, how's it going? Max here, back again with another remote controlled DIY project. This time we're making a fast mini racing drone from scratch. We're going to use a small common 2.4 gigahertz receiver board along with its corresponding transmitter. It'll also be made by using some new drone frame building techniques to get this drone to be as sturdy and lightweight as possible. All right, let's get started making this mini racing quad. So here's all the things you'll need to make this drone. The main parts needed to build this drone such as the receiver board, battery, cordless motors and props can all be bought separately through the links in the description below. Just before we jump right into making the mini drone, let me introduce the sponsors of this video. PCB Way is a company who provides custom printed circuit board prototyping service. One of the only well-known PCB companies who also do 3D printing and CNC metal machining on the side. They also do PCB assembly along with free shipping. Get an instant quote, upload a file of your prototype to their website, select specifications, and order today from any one of their services. As a new customer, you get a free $5 coupon. A link is in the description below this video video to pcbway.com. Check them out. To make the drone's arms, we'll be using the main mounting track from something called a cable raceway or electrical wire cover. You can find such cable tracks in your local hardware store. You're going to want to slice off the two side tracks. Cut off four segments measuring no less than five centimeters in length. The cool thing about these little tracks is that they allow you to keep the motor wires neatly hidden away. Take a track and cut a one centimeter deep gap between the walls. From an old pen, cut 2 cm short sections of pipe. Slice the end of this pipe diagonally, sort of creating a foot for your drone. The arm wraps around it like so. Make three more of these and if you want, you can also spray paint them any color you'd like. With the arm wrapping around the pipe, super glue the two together. Stick in a cordless motor with some electrical tape wrapped around it, keeping it tight and snug. Push the motor's wires into the track and squeeze the opening shut. Be sure to repeat this step three more times until you have four arms with motors. Next you're going to make the base of the drone or basically assemble the body of the drone using some popsicle sticks which will keep the receiver and battery in place as well as what the arms will connect to. Using something like pieces of lollipop stick as washes is a good idea to keep the receiver sitting very plain and level as it's got a 3 axis accelerometer and we don't want to have any issues with it being tilted. Once the receiver is screwed in place it should look like this. Snip off the excess edges. Next attach all four arms to the body of the drone. To ensure that the arms are pointing out 90 degrees from each other, you can use your cutting mat to align the arms. It's a pretty good indication to make sure all the arms are sticking out in the right way. Once all the arms are attached, your drone should look like this. Now this does seem a little fragile, so let's attach some supporting pieces to make the arms a little more durable. Configure the motor wires so they're all pointing up onto the receiver. Strip the wire ends and then solder them onto the board. Each pair of motor wires gets soldered to the nearest motor output terminals in a positive to positive, negative to negative way unless you find out one of the motors happens to spin in the wrong direction because direction here is important. To check that you've wired up the motors correctly, attach on the propellers and check that they're spinning the right way to produce lift. If even one motor is spinning the wrong way, you'll have to re-solder it, changing its polarity until all of them are spinning in the correct directions. Of course, we'll also have to make a little case or pocket for the battery to sit in. A preferable way is to also make the battery holder from popsicle sticks.
Once the drone's battery holder is made, attach on the props and match up their orientation according to the diagram shown here. And do a quick test to make sure it flies. Taking a closer look at the transmitter, the left stick is for throttle and turning. The right stick controls the drone's direction. As the last step, you can make a simple body cover that sits on top of the receiver. I decided to make it from foam and a piece of a soda can. After making the body cover, be sure to strengthen the motor holding joints with a bit more plastic. Some pieces of plastic from the same cable raceway. These plastic supports greatly reduce the chances of the motors breaking off, especially when the drone lands back down every time. Since these flat joystick thumb grips weren't really suitable for a racing type drone, I decided to change them out for some longer ones, sort of what like any other controller would have. About which exact LiPo batteries you should be using for your mini drone, I suggest using 230 milliamp hour batteries, but since mine were pretty dead, I'm using a standard 150 milliamp hour battery and I charge it using my homemade TP4056 charger. I replaced the small resistor that was on there with a 10 kilo ohm resistor to limit the current to 150 milliamps to charge such a little battery. I also added a female charging connector. Plugging the battery in, it should go red, indicating that it's charging, and when it's fully charged, it goes blue. All right, so now I'm at the forest testing my little drone out. Here we go. Nice, pretty stable. This thing is a pretty smooth flyer. Quite a lot of fun to fly. Okay everyone, this mini racing quadcopter has been quite a lot of fun to play around with. From my DIY drone tutorial, I hope to see quite a number of you make your own little racing quads. Purchase links to all of the main drone parts can be found in the description box below this video, listed along with the rest of the needed materials. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to my YouTube channel with that notification bell ticked. Follow me on Instagram, and if you're ever considering to make a financial donation to my work, a link is in the description box below to my Bitcoin wallet where you can donate. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. Peace!